I hope you're enjoying this control panel building series. If you're seeing this clip, then you've entered in the middle of the series, so make sure you go back to part one and see it all the way through. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and tell us in the comments what you think about this video series and what you'd like to see the next one on. All right, so our control panel is complete, and one big thing we have left to do is to test it. And every control panel should receive some testing before it goes out of your shop. Even if, like in this case, I don't really have motor loads and everything, I can still test a lot of this functionality. And most importantly, we can check our control power. Even if you're going to end up installing it somewhere, it just is a lot easier to fix problems at your shop, but also when you don't have 10 people looking over your shoulder. So the start button will start the 5 horsepower drive. You can see we have speed control. And then the stop button stops it. And then for the three horsepower, they're both momentary. There's our forward, stops. There's our reverse, we'll let off and it stops. And then we have our speed control for it also. All right, there are a few finishing touches to our panel. First of all, we are a UL508A panel manufacturer. So we need to fix our label to it. Then you should have a nameplate label, and this should have information that one the electrician will need to install it, such as the voltage and the full load amps. Now, yes, he can look in here and see that this is a 60 amp disconnect, but that one that doesn't tell him is full load amps, which an electrician really needs to do his calculations, and he shouldn't have to open the panel to do it. Remember, every time this panel is handled before it is actually put into service is another chance for it to get scratched. Along with that, you should have the short circuit current rating, which I'll put a link to an article in the description about how to calculate that, and the environmental rating. So, for example, this is a Type 4 enclosure, which means it is resistant to a certain amount of water and dust. Um, in fact, I'll put a link in the comments about NEMA and IP enclosure rating. And make sure you put your company sticker on it. That way people know how to contact you if they have any issues or hopefully they want to buy something else from you. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Be sure to subscribe for more great videos. And like this video and comment on what you would like to see next. Visit our website where we offer a full line of PLCs, simulators, control panels, PLC trainers, and more.